Lesson 1.2D. This is the last part of Lesson 1.2. We're going to talk about constructing number lines. We can create a number line to display given values adequately. That means we can create it to suit our purpose. We have horizontal or vertical lines with arrowheads at the ends. So it's going to have arrowheads at the ends. And we need tick marks at evenly spaced intervals. Intervals are the space between the marked values on a number line. And we'll need numbers that suit the given values. So each of these lines is a tick mark. To create a number line, first thing we do is determine the number of tick marks we need. Then we place them at equal intervals, the same distance from each other. Then we label the tick marks with numbers. The horizontal number lines will have the numbers go below it. And vertical number lines, the numbers will go to the left side of the number line. And then we graph the points that correspond to the values to be displayed. So if we have a horizontal number line, we're going to put our numbers below the tick marks. And if we have a vertical number line, we're going to put our numbers to the left of the tick marks. And remember, as we go up, the numbers will go up. And as we go down, we'll get into the negatives. So let's talk about the intervals on a number line. So remember, an interval is the space between marked values on the number line. Okay, it's the spaces between the tick marks. So here we have the numbers 2, 6, 8, and 10. And looking carefully at these numbers, we see they're all even, and they're all multiples of 2. And we can create a number line whose tick marks are labeled as even numbers, as multiples of 2. We're going to start with 0. We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Though the number 4 is not on this list, we need to include it on our number line as a multiple of 2. We need 5 tick marks to count from 2 to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we need 2 more tick marks, 1 here and 1 here, to give space on each end of the number line. So that's going to be 7 tick marks in all when we've got 4 given numbers. Now we're given the numbers 1 and 5 tenths, 2, 3, 4 and 5 tenths, and 5. And looking carefully at these numbers, we see that our tick marks will need to represent decimals that go to the tenths place. To make a suitable number line, we can label our tick marks with multiples of 5 tenths, since the tenths place is either a 0 or a 5. So we don't need to put 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths. That would make it way too long. If our number line listed every tenth, it would be too long and take up too much room on our paper. We need 10 tick marks in all. We need 8 to go from 1 and 5 tenths to 5 whole. Then we need 2 more tick marks for space on each end. So even though we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 given values, we need 10 tick marks on our number line. If our data, the given values, only consist of positive numbers, our number line only needs to be labeled with positive numbers. And if our data only consists of negative numbers, our number line only needs to be labeled with negative numbers. But if our data consists of positive and negative numbers, our number line needs to be labeled with positive and negative numbers with a zero between them. Here the given values are all fractions and the denominators are all the same. They're all eighths. So we can make a number line that has intervals and are labeled with numbers in eighths. Because the first number is 1 eighth, we're going to need to start it at 0. We have 5 given numbers. We need 9 tick marks, 
7 to go from 1 eighth to 7 eighths, and then 2 more to give space on each end. Here we have three numbers, and since we have a decimal that goes to the hundredths place, our number line would include hundredths, and the intervals are five hundredths, 0 0.05 to save space. If we did every single hundredth, our number line would be way too long. But we can see, because we know we can add a zero at the end of a decimal and it won't affect its value, we can see that we can have it go to the hundredths place. We only have three numbers, but there's eight tick marks in all to go from 75 hundredths to one whole, we needed six. Then we needed two more for space on the ends. We're going to move on to lesson 1.3 now, which is going to be broken into two parts, finding absolute value and comparing absolute values. I hope you'll join me. I hope you have a great day, and you can help my channel and you can help me by hitting that like button, and it'll also tell me that I was able to help you. Bye.